Welcome to week six of Strong Lungs, Strong Life, Smoking Cessation Program. This week we will be discussing dealing with withdrawals and triggers, which may make quitting difficult for you. As smokers, we often think of smoking as an enjoyable pastime. Cigarettes can offer comfort, entertainment, and companionship, or so we think. At the same time, we relate smoking cessation to feelings of pain, misery, and sacrifice. Or for most of us, these opposing feelings exist and are reinforced on a subconscious level. They're below the surface of our thoughts. The result is that we adopt unhealthy and inaccurate beliefs as facts of life, when in reality they are only our distorted perceptions of the truth. A first step in successfully developing the will it takes to quit smoking involves learning how to pay attention to what we tell ourselves and correct false statements as soon as they occur. It takes practice and patience, but if you keep it up, listening in consciously on the thoughts that go through your mind on a daily basis will become second nature, as will correcting those that don't serve you. In the following slides, we will review some examples of thought conditioning you may develop on your journey to becoming smoke-free. I won't enjoy the party because I can't smoke. I'll be miserable and I'll hate every minute of it. In fact, I'm already miserable just thinking about it. What will be the result of this statement? At a minimum, you'll feel deprived and unhappy at the party. The stage is set for a smoking relapse because on a subconscious level, you are giving yourself the message that smoking cessation is a sacrifice. Shift your focus and correct the language by countering with something such as this. Going to the party smoke-free will be a challenge and I may feel uncomfortable, but it will provide me with the practice I need to learn how to live my life without leaning on cigarettes. After all, practice makes perfect. I know these discomforts are a temporary stage of healing from a nicotine addiction. My friends get to smoke. Why can't I? Remind yourself that your friends don't get to smoke. They have to smoke because they're addicted to nicotine. Give yourself a positive mental cue by counteracting your feelings of self-pity. Try something like this. My friends wish they could quit smoking, like I have. I remember how desperately I wanted to quit every time I lit up. It was a vicious cycle that I'm free of now. I'm bored without my cigarettes. Life isn't fun without them. It may be worth putting in perspective how much time out of your day was spent being chained to your cigarettes. It may be helpful to consider that on average it can take 10 minutes to smoke one cigarette. This means I used to smoke three hours every single day. It's no wonder I feel a little fidgety and empty. I'll take up a hobby and do something productive with the time I used to spend smoking. I feel so irritable without my smokes. I'm impatient and angry without cigarettes. And when you're feeling the discomforts of nicotine withdrawal, be careful to reinforce that pain you're feeling is because of smoking, not quitting. Reinforce this way. Cigarettes did this to me. Once I'm free of this addiction, I'm never going back to the slavery that nicotine forced me into again. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. You get the idea. The icky threes typically occur at three days, three weeks, and three months. Let's review these further. The first three days of smoking cessation are intense for most of us. Often, the first day or two are fueled by the excitement of taking the initial plunge into quitting, but by the third day, reality is setting in, and so are the discomforts of physical withdrawal from nicotine. Withdrawal symptoms were first discussed in week two. This slide shows just a few reminders of what you may experience those first three days following smoking cessation. Remember the five D's when you find yourself faced with nicotine withdrawal. Delay distract, drink water, deep breaths, discuss your feelings. We know that withdrawals are psychological but can produce very real physical reactions in our bodies. This makes a mental trigger feel like a physical withdrawal. Successful recovery includes learning how to hear the message behind the urge to smoke and responding to it with appropriate choices such as a nap or a meal for instance. Have patience with yourself. The skill takes some time to hone, but you'll get better at it. Eventually, cigarettes will fade as a fix for physical and emotional needs, 
and you'll make choices that actually address the signal your body is sending without thinking twice about it. Review the underlying trigger. When the urge to smoke hits, think halt. Hunger. Anger. Loneliness. Tiredness. If you are hungry, food is the answer, not cigarettes. Eat a snack. If you're concerned about weight gain, try drinking water before you eat a snack to help control the amount you eat. Keep healthy snacks on hand. Celery sticks, raw baby carrots, and frozen grapes make a good low calorie snack. Normal weight gain due to quitting smoking is 5 to 8 pounds. Metabolism does slow a bit initially, so some daily exercise is a good idea. Things will balance out and that quit related weight will drop off within a couple months as long as you're eating the same as you were before you stopped smoking. Anger is a big trigger for most of us. Find healthy outlets for your feelings of frustration. If at all possible, deal with the situation that is bothering you head on and be done with it. Talk to your friends and family about your feelings or write in your journal. Reaching for a cigarette can seem like a quick fix, but it is a false fix. Remember what is actually happening when you smoke. Deep breathing. Remove yourself from the situation. We may not always be able to choose the events that happen around us, but we do have control over how we let external situations affect us emotionally. Remind yourself that no one has the power to affect your emotions without your approval. You control your inner environment for better or worse. For most ex-smokers, loneliness is more accurately described as boredom. Smoking was such a constant companion, it was an activity in and of itself. Early on in cessation, distraction is a useful tool that can help you manage feelings of boredom. Get out for a walk, watch a movie, or work on a hobby. Come up with a list of things you enjoy doing and do some of them. Make them fun and they will help you get over the hump of this type of smoking trigger. Depression also falls under this category. People quitting tobacco are especially susceptible to the blues, at least early on. Leaving cigarettes behind can feel like the loss of a friend, albeit a destructive, life-stealing friend. After years of smoking, most of us feel the loss of smoking in this way to some extent. If you feel yourself slipping into a funk, take action. Change your environment and it will help you change your attitude. It's okay to mourn the death of your smoking habit, but don't glorify it as something it was not. It was out to kill you. Remember that. Fatigue can be a big trigger for the newly quit. Instead of lighting up when you're tired, give yourself permission to slow down and relax a little. Take a nap or go to bed early if you need to. Sounds so simple, yet people often push themselves too far with all of the demands of life these days. Be aware and take care. Don't let yourself get run down. A tired you is going to be more susceptible to junky thinking and the threat of relapse. Protect your quit by protecting your health both physically and mentally. It may feel like you'll never be free of cigarettes and thoughts of smoking will always plague you, but have some faith in yourself and the process and please be patient. We taught ourselves to smoke and we can teach ourselves to live comfortably without smokes too. And now comes the three month blahs. At three months the newness of quitting smoking has worn off and we're often left thinking, is that all there is? That too triggers cravings to smoke, often quite intensely. Remember, knowledge is power. And it is important for you to know that through your journey, you may have to go through the various stages of grief or loss, or maybe you have already encountered one of these stages. Denial and isolation, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. These stages may have occurred in any order, and some may have reoccurred over your journey. It is important to know that these are normal reactions. Let's discuss these in more detail. First, denial and isolation. These are the mind's first way of protecting us from a sudden change or loss. People who lose a friend or family member say they feel numb. This is called a psychological defense mechanism. What this means is that although you know the importance of quitting, you may not want to believe it. The denial phase happened before you even found this program. Next is anger. When we begin to accept a loss, we often feel anger. If you perceived comfort from smoking, you are likely to feel angry about the change. You may be angry about the loss of your friend. 
You might be angry about many things or everything. In fact, a lot of people avoid quitting because they feel so irritable during the recovery process. Remember that anger is part of the process. Don't try to resist it. Accept it. Safely vent it and take some time to feel it. You may feel angry and testy. You don't have to have a reason to feel that way. You just do. It will subside. Bargaining is the stage where you feel tempted to postpone the inevitable. You might try to switch brands, smoke only at home, or only at work. You might also try to make deals or empty promises. This is a risky phase because a lot of people slip or relapse at this point, so be careful. Realizing that it is a natural part of the process of quitting sometimes helps to move past it. Laugh it off and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your inner self. Make a strong commitment to be in control of the cigarette. If you give in to bargaining, the cigarette once again is in control. Say out loud, nothing or no one controls me. Put that statement on a sticky note and put it in a place where you'll be reminded to think about it and repeat it often. When you are able to acknowledge and accept the loss of your friend, the cigarette, it's natural to experience some sadness. This is especially true when no one else seems to know or understand this loss. People often experience this in one of two ways. They either feel a deep sense of sadness or a deep sense of deprivation. Don't resist this stage or think it's crazy to mourn the loss of a cigarette. Be as direct with this stage as we suggest with the anger stage. Accept it. Talk about it. Take some time to just feel sad. Then move on and focus on the benefits of what you're doing. A healthy person who has suffered a loss eventually accepts its reality and goes on living life. In this stage, you begin to realize that your former smoking lifestyle is over. You are finally recovering from your sense of loss or grief. You can get on with living your newfound, healthier lifestyle. A new and better life begins. The key to moving through psychological recovery is your attitude toward quitting. Continue to look at these symptoms as part of the recovery process. Look at this as a type of challenge, expectation, and excitement over what lies ahead for you. You will make discoveries about yourself. Stop thinking you are giving something up. It is the exact opposite. You've gained something. Your freedom. You are now in control. Thoughts of smoking are common as you go through nicotine withdrawal. Your mind can feel like it's turning itself inside out trying to convince you to have just one cigarette. Don't let that throw you. This is a normal part of recovery from nicotine and addiction. Make a vow to put your thoughts on ignoring when you're struggling and keep your focus on the day you have in front of you only. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't fret about never smoking again. Just think about getting through today smoke free. There's another step in finding permanent freedom from nicotine addiction that is just as important as practice and time. It involves your attitude. Have you heard about people who still struggle years and years after quitting? They're the ones who say they still miss smoking 20 years down the road. I know that may be a frightening thing to hear, but don't let it throw you. The reason they are in that position has to do with the fact that they never did the work to change what cigarettes meant to them. Along with using patience and time to help you reprogram your association with smoking, you must also alter the way you think about your cigarettes. The path to permanent freedom has to do with changing the relationship you have to smoking. And the way to make that mental shift is through education. What word comes to your mind when I say cigarette? Is this a positive response? Like happy, relaxed? Fill in the blank. I can't wait until lunch so I can. Maybe your lunch break is when you kick back and relax with a cigarette. How do you feel after you smoke? Maybe you are feeling soothed and calm. What feeling do you have if I come up to you and say, ugh, you smell like smoke? Is it embarrassment? What feeling do you feel when your wife or child says, I thought you promised me that you would quit? Maybe there is a sense of guilt with that? What feeling do you feel when you are outside on your porch by yourself smoking? You could feel lonely.
What word comes to your mind when I say cigarette? Is this a positive response? Like happy, relaxed? Fill in the blank. I can't wait until lunch so I can. Maybe your lunch break is when you kick back and relax with a cigarette. How do you feel after you smoke? Maybe you are feeling soothed and calm. What feeling do you have if I come up to you and say, Ugh, you smell like smoke. Is it embarrassment? What feeling do you feel when your wife or child says, I thought you promised me that you would quit. Maybe there is a sense of guilt with that. What feeling do you feel when you are outside on your porch by yourself smoking? You could feel lonely. Remember to be patient. Withdrawal is temporary. This is a process. This is change, and change is hard. Learn the underlying trigger and fix it. Don't be so hard on yourself. And finally, remember to reward yourself. Thank you for participating in week six of Strong Lungs, Strong Life, Smoky Cessation class. In this class, we discussed the icky threes of withdrawal, as well as ways to halt when the urge to smoke is upon us. We reviewed the normal grieving process people experience when quitting. I hope this material helps in understanding why changing your lifestyle and quitting can be so difficult. Remember, take one day at a time. You can do it. Thanks, and I hope to see you for week seven.